I've lived in six different rigs during my full-time RV life, and some of them were winners and some were losers. Today, I'm going to give you the video I wish I had seen before I bought any of them. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. Show of hands. How many of you out there are happy with the rig that you have, or are thinking about switching it up, or are just flummoxed by all of the choices out there? And by show of hands, I mean, tell me in the comments below. After seven years on the road and six different rigs, I can tell you that I've learned a lot, and I'm gonna share all of that information with you, and a lot of it might surprise you. The first one was a B plus Leisure Travel Van Unity Murphy bed that was 25 feet long on a Mercedes chassis. The second one was a Class C Tiffin Wayfarer, also 25 feet on a Mercedes chassis. The third one was a 35 foot Grand Design fifth wheel that I pulled with a Ford F350. The fourth one was a Lance truck camper that I carried on that F-350 that was about three feet longer than the truck itself, so it came in also about 25 feet. Then I had a 16-foot Bambi Airstream that I pulled with a Grand Cherokee. And finally, I got to travel for a couple of weeks in a 159 Promaster camper van that I borrowed from Wayfair camper vans out of Colorado Springs, Colorado that was just under 20 feet long I will put their link below so you can check out their very cool affordable build and I'll also give you guys the link for the tour video that I did of the Wayfair van. Today I'm going to tell you how from my own personal experience each of these six rigs stack up and then I'm going to tell you in each category which one was the winner and which one was the loser. Think about what kind of space you might need right now to live your dream RV life. Are you solo? Are you a couple? Are you retired? Are you still working? Do you have pets or hobbies? Do you wanna camp in one place for a long time or do you wanna go, go, go? When you're looking at a rig, open up the driver door and look for the yellow sticker that tells you what the OCCC is, which is occupant carrying capacity. This tells you how much stuff you can carry. I really did not understand the importance of OCCC until I had my Tiffin Wayfair Class C, which had an OCCC rating on my rig of under 800 pounds. Two people, water, and an e-bike, and I was done. I was overweight, which made it really difficult to drive and not as safe as if I had chosen one that had more capacity. For OCCC, the winner is the fifth wheel. It can carry a bunch and the loser is the Tiffin. Do you need satellite TV? Do you need a big flat screen and a luxury shower and reclining chairs? Or do you just need a rig that simply gets you where you wanna go? In my fifth wheel, I have air conditioning, I have a washer dryer, and I have lots of space and a big TV and a recliner. So for bells and whistles for me, the winner is the fifth wheel. The loser in the bells and whistles category is the Wayfair van because their business model is to build high quality, affordable camper vans that are simple and get people out on the road so that they can travel. They don't have all the bells and whistles. So if you're looking for something really swanky with a lot of room and a lot of toys, the van is not for you. Now that we've talked about livability, let's talk about versatility, which is also super important for me. The first thing that comes to mind in this category is power. Do you want to be able to go out and boondock? I can tell you that my first two rigs, the 25 foot leisure travel van and the 25 foot Tiffin Class C were awful in this category because there wasn't enough space on the roof to have solar. In my fifth wheel, however, I was able to put 1200 watts of solar on the roof and a 3000 watt inverter and six lithium batteries inside the bay that would normally hold a generator because I knew that I was gonna be a boondocker. On the other hand, if you go small and simple like the Wayfarer van, you don't need as much power. I was really surprised when I took the Wayfarer out that the entire van runs on a goal zero power box that was charged by 400 watts of solar on the roof and also a DC to DC charger. So the goal zero was charging as I was going down the road. 
There wasn't a lot of stuff inside of the Wayfair that needed to suck the power, so I didn't go below 75% ever, even using the Starlink. But if you wanna use your vehicle for other things, then a Wayfair is great because most of their components can be taken out in like 10 minutes with a wrench. So you can literally move out the kitchen and the countertops and everything like that, and then have a fully usable cargo van. Let me give you a quick note on the Airstream. The Airstream was small, but I was able to put in two lithium batteries and a 2000 watt inverter. But because it was tiny, I could only put 90 watts of solar on the roof and had to carry around 400 watts of external panels, which I had to take out and plug in to the Airstream to charge the batteries, which wasn't really possible on windy days. I also put in a DC to DC charger. The winner in this category is a tie. If you go with a big rig, the fifth wheel is absolutely the winner. But if you're going to go with a small, simple rig, the Wayfair van with the Goal Zero box is the winner. And Leisure Travel Van and Tiffin tied as the losers for versatility in power. The next category is budget. I'm going to break down each rig so that you understand the financial commitment you're making when you choose your next RV. First, let's talk about the initial cost to buy a rig. I know that is a big deal. And I have a lot of people ask me how I can switch from rig to rig. Well, I choose RVs that hold their value. If you go over to my blog at creativityrv.com, there is an old post on there for subscribers only that give you my spreadsheet with a breakdown and how I choose my rigs. I'll tell you, my first rig that was a leisure travel van was expensive. It was $120,000 in 2018. And right now, 2018s are going for at least that much, sometimes even 130. So they hold their value because there was less in the market. I looked at getting a Winnebago, but there are so many Winnebagos out there that because of supply and demand, when you go to sell it, you don't get a lot for it. So I got the Leisure Travel Van. I was able to roll that money into the Tiffin, which also unbelievably holds its value. Rolled that over into my fifth wheel. The expense there was the truck, but then I was able to sell that truck. And with the value of the F-350, which was also great, I was able to get the Airstream and the Jeep. Now, if you have an all-in-one, like a B plus or an A or a C, then financing can be a little bit easier if you have to finance because you don't have to deal with two vehicles. And the insurance and the registration is a lot better. With my towable setups, like the fifth wheel in the Airstream, I had to pay for insurance and registration on both. Fun fact, I did not have to do that with the truck camper because since it's on top of the truck, it doesn't have to be registered and it was insured through my truck policy. One thing that I thought was really cool about the Wayfair vans is that you can actually finance the build, which is the most affordable build I've ever seen, into your car payment. So if you need to finance, that does make it a lot easier. In the initial cost category, the Leisure Travel Van was the winner because out of all of the rigs I've had, it held its value the best. But there's a tie in this category too. The Wayfair Van is an affordable van and you can finance it. So it's also a winner. The loser in this category for me has been the fifth wheel because of the cost to insure and register the truck and the rig. You know the next one is big for me. How much does it cost to repair and maintain these rigs? The bigger you go, the more it costs. And that's what I've been dealing with here inside of my fifth wheel and with the hail damage that I had on my Airstream. Remember, if you have a bigger rig, there's a lot more to maintain. You have to do the roof and maintain the slides and maintain the tires. And think about this, you might want a big luxury Super C or a diesel pusher, but the tires on those are ridiculous, like way more than it would be on a van. So you have to calculate that into your expenses as you go down the road. Now let's talk about repairs. Believe me when I tell you everything will break and doing repairs will be a constant chore. For example, if you saw my last video, you know that when I took my fifth wheel out of storage, the furnace, the refrigerator, the dryer, and the air conditioner all went out at the same 
time. Now, before that, I filmed an entire video I didn't put out of maintenance that I did on the Airstream before it was destroyed. Everything in there had to be maintained as well. The sink broke, the fan motor had to be replaced. It goes on and on and on. So just know you're going to need repairs. In the fifth wheel, the kitchen island actually collapsed because it's held up just on a couple of little screws. This is a common problem inside of fifth wheels. Just know that's going to happen. And the bigger the rig and the more stuff, the more you're going to have to repair. Another thing to consider is that when you buy one of these manufactured rigs like a Leisure Travel Van or a Tiffin, the company really is only responsible for the structure. Everything else inside is really under warranty through different manufacturers. Like in the fifth wheel, one time I went to a campground, I set up, I put out my slides, I put out the legs, I was level. When I went inside and pushed the button to put out the slides, the entire rig went like this. And I went outside and my leg had snapped. When I called Grand Design, they told me that it was my fault because I must have set it up wrong or I was on gravel. I hired a mobile RV repair guy to come out. It turns out that there was a blockage in my Lippert hydraulic system. So when I pushed the slide, the hydraulics went backwards and made the leg come out. So I got that covered through Lippert. But on my Tiffin, my walls literally separated. I could stand in the bathroom and put my arm through to the bedroom. If I closed one cabinet, another cabinet opened. Everything was uneven. I had to send it back to Tiffin for two months to repair it, and the repairs didn't work. Nobody at a dealership would touch that because it was a structural issue. So just understand how everything is covered for repairs. For maintenance, the winner hands down is the Wayfair van. You just don't have to maintain a lot. The loser is this Grand Design fifth wheel. There is a lot of stuff to maintain. For repairs, again, the winner is the Wayfarer van because there's just not a lot to have to repair. And as you can imagine, the loser is the Tiffin Class C. The next thing I wanna talk about under budget is the cost of propane, gas, and electric. If you have a bigger rig, you're going to use more propane, like if you have a propane furnace. Remember, these have really tall ceilings. They're harder to heat and they're harder to cool. In the fifth wheel, it wasn't uncommon when I was traveling and boondocking in it full time to spend $100, $125 a month on propane to heat my water and to run my refrigerator and maybe the furnace, even though I didn't run it that often. The best one was definitely the Airstream. I hardly ever had to fill up that propane. I was lucky if I spent $40 a month. The Wayfair van was also great because they have a couple of grocery store size propane tanks in the back that run their furnace. And I didn't even really need it because the insulation was so great. But in the Tiffin Class C, because I had to run my generator off of propane, I went through propane like crazy just to run the house, not even my devices. So in the propane category, the winner, is tied between the Airstream and the Wayfair van, and the loser once again was the Tiffin Class C. For electric, it's really the same thing. If you're in a big rig and you need AC or you need to run like a washer or dryer, you might need to be in an RV park. And remember, if you're there monthly or full time, you probably have to pay an electric charge, which might run over $100 a month. Of course, if you have enough space, to have solar panels, that really helps with electric, especially if you're going to be boondocking. So under electric, the winner is really the Wayfair van because remember, the entire van is run off of the Goal Zero power box that charges while it's driving and it has solar on the roof. For boondocking and electric, the losers are Leisure Travel Van and the Tiffin Class C. And honorable mention, the fifth wheel is a mixed bag. I have enough space on the roof for a lot of solar, but the ceilings on here are so high, it's almost impossible to cool in the summer during a heat wave when you can't run your air conditioner because you're filming like I am right now. Seriously, the struggle this week is real. Now let's talk about the winners and losers for gas mileage. The bigger you are, 
the more you're going to have to spend on gas, duh. Hands down, the leisure travel van, 25 feet long on the Mercedes chassis was the winner. I got 22, 23 miles to the gallon all the time. The same thing was true for the Tiffin, but it was a little bit less. The fifth wheel being towed by an F-350 was the worst. I only got nine miles to the gallon. When I put the truck camper on, I only got like 11 or 12. In the Airstream, I got about 12. In the van, I got between 18 and 20 miles to the gallon. The next category is the hassle factor. I'm talking about all things like how it is to drive these rigs and break camp and plan your trips and everything. For me, this is a big one. Before I got on the road, I had never driven an RV. I had really not even been in one. I bought the leisure travel van, sight unseen, flew out to South Dakota, picked it up and started living in it full time. Why? Because I was scared to drive something bigger or hook something up. So I thought the B plus was bigger than a camper van, but not so big that I'd be scared to drive it. I was completely shocked though by the experience I had with it once I got on the road. Now the Mercedes chassis is not bad, but it's light and the leisure travel van and the Tiffin are tall. So they were both pretty bad in the wind, especially if it was hitting me from the side. Surprisingly, the fifth wheel was the best in the wind. In the big F-350, I didn't really feel the wind at all. The Airstream was a mixed bag. I didn't feel high wind too much in the Jeep, but I did feel some sway, like I had a bustle back there that was moving in the wind. The Wayfair van was the best. In the wind, I could feel it, but it wasn't as bad as the Leisure Travel van and the Tiffin were, and it fits into a parking space, man. It's like run to the grocery store, run to get gas, stealth camp. Everything was possible because it was so small at under 20 feet. For drivability, if you're going small, the Wayfair van is the best. And if you're going big, the fifth wheel was the best. The Leisure Travel Van and the Tiffin Class C are once again tied for the worst in this category because they weren't fun to drive in the wind and they were 25 feet, which didn't make them hard to park, but it also didn't make it easy enough to offset the wind. Now, under hassle, let's talk about breaking camp and hooking up. By far, the fifth wheel was the most difficult. It just takes time. I thought in that Airstream, I would unhook all the time and just have the Jeep to tool around. And I found that I didn't really do that as much as I thought I would because the hooking and the unhooking was just a hassle. The Leisure Travel Van and the Tiffin Class C were easier to break camp than the trailer or the fifth wheel, but they still had slides and legs. The Wayfair Van was the easiest. I literally threw my chair in the back and went, which I really loved. After seven years on the road, sometimes the chores and the hassle factor get really old. So for breaking camp and hooking up, the winner hands down was the Wayfair van. The loser was the fifth wheel. The next thing in the hassle factor category I wanna talk about is planning. This is not something that I fully appreciated before I hit the road. If you have a tall vehicle, like a fifth wheel, or even my truck camper was super tall, you have to be careful when you're planning your route that you're not going to hit a bridge and shear off the top of your rig. You might also want to consider if you're going through tolls, which can be more expensive on a bigger rig, or you wanna ride on a ferry. Sometimes if you're really big, you can't get on a ferry. The winner in this category is the Wayfair van because I didn't have to worry about bridge height or windy roads or steep inclines or declines or where I was gonna park at night. It was easy. And finally, in the hassle factor category, let's talk about finding camping. This is a big deal, whether you're going to be staying in a campground, you're going to be boondocking your part-time or your full-time. If you have a bigger rig, it's just harder. If you wanna to go to like a national park or a popular area and you wanna stay at a campground, sometimes you have to make those reservations a year in advance. If you wanna stay at like a harvest host, 
a lot of those hosts have caps on how long you can be. If you're going to boondock, you don't have to worry about a reservation, but you really have to look at the roads and the turns if you have a bigger vehicle and really check recent reviews on the area to see if things are washed out or there's big rocks in the way. With a van, it is a lot easier to maneuver around those types of problems. For camping availability, the van was really a winner. I was able to camp on a river in Moab at a tent only site, which I've never been able to do before, and just open up the back doors to the water. So the winner in the category of camping availability is definitely the van and the loser is the fifth wheel. If you guys want to share any of your experiences with any type of rig and the things that you wish that you knew before you bought that rig and hit the road, please do share it down below. Share this video with your friends if they can use it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys with an all new video next week. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.